They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The backpack. All right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find mm, your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you gotta pack it carefully. Or have a pack mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need a pack mat. Only fixies have pack mats. And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help him do it. Sure, no, like. <sighs> A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <sighs> Testing of the world's first pack of design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go. First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack mat and eraser. Got it. Watch me. Cool. A pen, your blue one. Got it. Hmm. <laughs> We're experiencing technical problems. We need a break. Testing of the world. I know, first. I know. Just start. Take out the eraser. Mm hmm. <laughs> we'll say you did it. Take out the blue pen. Oh, wow. The ruler's next. The world's first packing mat designer. And where's the uh, Nolik? Don't worry, he'll come later. Testing. All right, already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure, I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Hmm. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? <laughs> There's no way. It's huge. Yeah. Some inventors you are. <laughs> your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun. <laughs> Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. Will fit inside, will fit inside, will fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back.
Whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. She put a note in there. Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. <laughs> if you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. <laughs> Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, uh, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. Kay no, let's <clears throat> stop your teasing. Well, are you going to write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink, like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses, or all the best, or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you're right, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. 
<laughs> no, Lick. If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just sip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. We gotta hurry! How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus! Uh, and what? We want to go with him, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision? Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful, don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there... Hooray! We can go! Wait a second. I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simkanolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention, please, on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts. Our next act, feats of strength. It won't come out. I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting onto an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. 
If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the Fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you, uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> then I'll play my part. And I'll play my part. <laughs> Grandpa's, we need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look! I found it! Yeah. Uh, hey! What's going on? <gasps> That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh! Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah! I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go! Class! So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're gonna knock over yours. Take that! Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. Get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. Then how do they move? Only one square per move and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Uh -huh. Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, like forward. Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward. Aha! Uh -huh. Next, I'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pawn, and once more, go forward. Gra Grampus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen! 
Queen! Get back here! In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the Queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pawn for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. All you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius in a checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpus. Grandpus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then, a needle is placed on top of the record. And as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great. Verda. Are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thud, and then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. Thomas, what's that 
music playing? It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fix them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The Mighty Crane was working until there was a pop. And then the Mighty Giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without him with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without him with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah. Well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? <laughs> A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Uh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh dear, what's going on? Ah! Stop this nonsense right now or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... Ah! Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get too easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yes, who's there? Ah! 
What's going on? Ah, 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 no, no, Lick. What are you doing in there? Ah, we just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa, Elisa. Professor Eugenius. I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop. Stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? Ah <laughs> Tom Thomas, when are you going to give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look inside the collider. What for? I looked already. Come on! There's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Glass, right? Uh-huh. It's great. I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh. Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me. With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid Shh. new Christmas oh, What's what? wrong? Ugh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah! Merry Christmas! Thanks so much. Now don't you feel good again? Yeah. It's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it! It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye In the kaleidoscope Shimmering scenes Gingerbread trees
Hi, everybody. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends? Or some ball hanging from a tree? Mika, over here. Take a look at what I found. <laughs> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little teddy bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait, it's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. <laughs> the human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together, and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What? Have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis, a new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Done. Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. Our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day. When there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tadish. Inside will be Tadish. all day and night. Tadish. We fix things right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. You found him for me. And you fixed him. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. Just like Grandpa said. 
A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And we're new. No, look, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. Tish! <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye-bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with his camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo apparatus. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The story of the century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simganolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one and you're in it. I know for sure. Look! I'm zooming in. It's impossible. 
I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> Paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it, after every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. The Combination Lock. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. Nolik, is that you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. You saw. Let me go again. I don't want to. You want me to play hide and seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Some game! Tom Thomas! Can I play your game? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. <laughs> a simple code lock is built with a few discs that have numbers on them. In the center of each disc is a hole with a notch. When all of the discs are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the discs to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. It looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. No look. Where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not going to help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right. You broke me down. Only as soon as we're done, you're going to let me play with the game. Right. <laughs> There's no room in here. Hang in there. We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Alley-oop! Tideesh! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place. But don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. 
And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it. I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show-off. You're just some greedy... Oops, sorry. Once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. We're not bothering you, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? <sighs> sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you too. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies! That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zemka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies, we're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world, who are friends with the only kid in the whole world, who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages, just like pets 
And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only Noel. The one and only Nolan. <laughs>